Hey everyone, CPO here, and in this video, I'm gonna be swapping my intake manifold from the factory North America to this European model, which has everything I need to affix an MPI kit. Keep in mind, the MPI kits also usually come with hardware so that you can convert your North America manifold to one that will accept the MPI kit. But I'm not covering that here because I have a European version manifold. So one of the things I'm gonna do is go ahead and poke a hole in the side of the manifold because I have a boost tap there on my current one. I'm gonna transfer that boost tap over. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and poke that hole right now before I get started because it's a lot easier to do here on the table than it is once it's in the car. So I just heated up a 16 penny nail, nice and hot, and then it melted through that plastic like butter. And there you go with the flashlight on the inside. You can see I've got a hole there. All right, so now to the car. Uh, actually, I'm gonna remove that boost tap first thing, and then we're gonna work on getting this current intake manifold out. So it's just a lot of disconnecting wiring, and there's vacuum ports, and, uh, and then of course uh, a handful of screws that have to uh, come off to get this thing out. I'm gonna leave my APR catch can on, and that's gonna make things a little bit more challenging just because there's that there I have to work around. I do have an ethanol sensor, so I've got some extra um, stuff there that you might not have. So here's the ethanol sensor right here. I'm just basically separating the fuel line to get that line off the top of the manifold to give me some room. Next, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove the screws that are holding the coolant pipe on. Now, I will say right now, this is gonna be easier for me than it will be for you if you still have your intake manifold bracket on. So from the factory, there's a bracket in the front of the intake manifold that I guess is what makes it a pain in the ass. It's so much of an issue that usually VW techs, when they work on these cars, they will just leave that off and not put it back on. So I've had my car into the shop exactly one time for a water pump replacement under warranty. And when they did that work, they decided not to put the bracket back on, which means I don't have a bracket. Wish I could help you with that, but I can't. Now, there are uh, two rows of bolts that are holding this to the head. There's the upper row, and then there's the lower row, and there's holes in the manifold so you can get to the lower row. So yeah, I'm just basically going through and loosening up all of those. Don't try and pull them out by hand because especially the lower ones, it's gonna be a pain to keep a hold on them without using a magnet of some sort. So what I'm just basically doing is, first thing I'm doing is going in and loosening them all up just to break them free. And then I'll go through and loosen them all so that they're just sitting in the screw hole um, but loose. And then that way I can take a magnet and run through and just pluck them all out which I think is the easiest way. And then of course you'll find out which ones you didn't get unthreaded all the way. And uh, hopefully you can avoid dropping them. Uh, not as bad to drop them now uh, because you're removing the manifold. Uh, you'll be able to get to the area where they fall if you can't get to it any other way. But uh, yeah, you don't wanna drop them in there when you're reassembling for sure. So there is this uh, plug on the side. So I'm loosening up the hose from the throttle body and I actually used a little bit of penetrating oil just to keep that a little bit slippery because it was wanting to grip on there. And I thought that this might help me um, get it slid off without uh, too much trouble. So my trick here is to remove the oil filter. Uh, you either really need to remove the oil filter or remove the fuel line coming out of the high pressure fuel pump and to me, this was a lot easier. Just remove the oil filter and that allows you to shift the entire manifold over to the passenger side just a little bit more than you could with it, which allows you to squeak it out on that side where the fuel line is because it's a hard fuel line over there. There's no uh, flex in it. So you're kind of stuck unless you can shift over towards the passenger side. So by removing that oil filter, I was able to get over just enough that I needed to get it worked out of there. 
So there are gonna be some vacuum lines and some other connectors that you just, as you're pulling the thing out, you're looking for what is still connected to your intake manifold. And you know, I'm not talking about every single connector, so hopefully in the video you can see everything I'm doing, and if you miss something, you can just pause and go back and check it out again. Uh, there are a lot of other good videos too on uh, removing the intake manifold, but most of them don't talk about getting it off of the car there's some video magic that seems to happen where they're trying to get the manifold out and then um, and then all of a sudden it's out and then you notice the fuel line is loose or something like that. Like So I wanted to show you the entire process of getting this out and that's really where I wanted to spend my time. And the trick again is just the oil filter. Leave the fuel line there if you don't want to mess with undoing all of that because it's actually kind of hard to get to. This is a good time to clean up around the intake port and then... Uh, take a look at your carbon buildup and see how much you've got going there. Actually, I didn't have very much carbon buildup at all. So uh, if you were going to do a carbon cleaning, this is the time to do it. All right, so now I'm taking the stuff off the old one and putting it on the new one. And uh, this throttle body is just held on with four screws. Now these screws are basically self-tapping into the plastic. So the plastic holes on the new manifold are not threaded yet. And so as you uh, screw in and tighten down the screws, uh, it's going to cut threads. So as you do this process, just make sure you're putting uh, a little bit of downward pressure on them so that you're cutting them uh, in, um, in a good way and not, not like lightly just stripping them out. So I made it sound more complicated than it really is. Just screw them in uh, and they will go in. But just know that they're not threaded. Uh, you're basically cutting threads with the screws. Anyway, so what I did is I started the four screws and then um, made sure everything was lined up and then I tightened them down in a cross pattern. That way it sort of cinch it down evenly from, from front to rear and side to side. All right, now there's this bracket here that uh, is for some of the electrical connections. Same thing, a couple screws um, that are going to be self-tapping into the new manifold. All right, now for this uh, little vacuum sensor manifold thing here, uh, there's a little clip that you can squeeze the sides to allow you to slide that off. You can see that clip right there. And disconnect the vacuum line and then just slide it back on the same way you took it off onto the new one. It might be a little tight, so you'll have to push on it probably pretty hard. And then I just took off this existing vacuum hose and maintain the use of the original one. It was in fine shape, so I didn't feel a need to change that. All right, now we need to move this sensor and it's basically just prying up the tabs to get it freed, kind of these little wing tabs. Just be careful not to break these if you can avoid it. There we go. Uh, I cleaned that off and then shoved it into the hole on the new one and just made sure it was clicked into place properly. And then the last thing I want to do is in technically move over the map sensor, but uh, I'm installing a five bar map sensor from EQT. So instead of swapping it over, I'm just going to put the five bar sensor on to the new manifold. I'm using a little bit of silicone grease uh, to uh, lubricate the seal, the little o-ring, and I'll also use that on the fuel injector o-rings, which I'm not going to cover in this video, but um, I use that for all like the little o-rings and stuff. And I am pulling the screw off of the old manifold and then using that for the new one, even though I'm not reusing that um, sensor. And again, self-tapping There we go, it's in good shape. Now we can put the new manifold onto the engine. So again, probably a little bit more of a pain for me because I have the APR catch can hoses there that I have to try and slip it underneath those hoses. Um, so if you don't have that, it might actually be easier for you, but it, it wasn't really a problem at all, to be honest with you. And then what you want to do is as you're putting it back together, make sure you get everything plugged in 
that you had previously unplugged. And there's things on both sides in the the rear rearmost uh, of the manifold, like towards the rear of the car. On each side, there's things under the manifold uh, that need to be plugged in. So just make sure you get all that stuff plugged in as you go, because once you get everything all back in, it would really suck to like have to figure out where you left something unplugged. So just double check that all that stuff gets plugged back in. Now I'm reconnecting the intake hose. This is the, the hose from the uh, intercooler. Reconnecting uh, all of my electrical connections, vacuum connections. And again, if you have that bracket, you would have also swapped the bracket hardware from the front of the intake manifold from the old one to the new one. Because I didn't have that bracket, they left it off. Uh, I don't have to make that swap. So I'm bracketless, but you might have a bracket that you would swap over as well. And then in the process of reinstalling this, that's something that you're gonna have to deal with how to remount it. All right, so once you get everything all connected and the manifold's in place, you can go ahead and start putting in the screws. And so I tightened down the screws uh, from uh, the middle, pushing outwards, left and right, and just alternating back and forth, top, bottom, left, top, bottom, right, top, bottom, left, top, bottom, right, and just going out and torquing those down. And uh, then uh, just tightening down all of the rest of the hoses that I have and uh, plugging in any of the sensors that I still have yet to plug in. All right, now the oil filter gets to go back in place and hopefully not make a big mess. You can see here I use a big Ziploc freezer bag to contain the mess while it was out of the car. And then now my boost tap is going back into the side port that I opened up when I first started. And yeah, I think that's it. Like tighten down this coolant line again, which is attached to the manifold, getting the rest of the coolant line fastened down. And I'm pretty sure we're done. So I now have holes for four new fuel injectors that I have to fill. So next the MPI kit has to go in. This is a beta kit I have right now, so not the final kit. So as soon as I get a final kit, I'll do a video showing that. But for now, just know that once you put on an MPI um, capable intake manifold, you now have the burden of putting in an MPI kit. So probably not telling you anything you didn't know. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.